You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. What's going on, everybody? What? Welcome back to No Other Pod. I'm Jimmy, as always, with my good buddy Dan. And Dan, it's not a victory pod this week because oh, it uh, is. It is well, a victory is. pot. Well, for, for a us. reason. For us. For uh, us. <laughs> U.S. men's national team didn't win, but if you are listening to this, you saw in the episode description the title already. It's a victory pot for us because we have none other than sporting legend Graham Zussi joining us on the show this week. You want a national team news? How about we just go ahead and bring on a former national team player? <laughs> That's what we're That's waiting right. on. Oh, my God. It's been too long, and uh, you know, you'll know you hear the interview in, in just a little bit. He gave us a little crap for a way, and it's my got fault. got in trouble. That we, we waited too long to get Graham Zussi on. <laughs> so that's uh, that's on me. I will take the blame. Right. But, uh, <laughs> he was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, we'll, we'll talk about it here in a bit. But yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to hear this. <laughs> oh, it, it was a great time. Uh, much appreciation to Graham. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh, Dan, how's, how's it going with you? I know uh, World Cup um, still ongoing, okay. but uh, just not for the U.S. men's national team anymore. Uh-huh. Uh, what was uh, your experience like watching that? Not for the stars and stripes, man. Uh, my experience was I I made an event out of my Saturday morning. Yep. I was just like, all right, get the workout out of the way. Oh, I got time for a shower before the game starts. Yep. And it uh, wasn't a great game. I mean, it was <sighs> it was stressful. And for a moment, it was like, oh, shit, there's, there's promise here. And then again, oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> it was, uh, oh, God, it was such a, I mean, so if you were going to ask me in a, moment of honesty do i think we're gonna win and i think we talked about this maybe the episode before probably not now i don't think it was impossible no it wasn't impossible we shouldn't have won that game this this i mean this was definitely a case of a a a country that's more established in in their soccer program uh showing us that you know we have some steps still to take two Um, former man united players scoring (laughs) <laughs> and i think i said last week netherlands might have won a world cup i was wrong they, but they've been runner up uh runners up like two or three times uh, yeah which i think i was remembering them being in the final couldn't um, quite get there so they know what it takes to to get very far into this tournament now we're also the young, one of the if not the youngest team in the tournament at least that was still left at this stage so um i think there are things overall to take from this world cup experience uh to build on in the next three and a half years before we come to North America. But I don't, man, there, Oh, that's here. There, it's, it's coming here. here. Three Dude, and a half years. Kansas City. Oh man. It'll be crazy. Um, You saving, you, you start that savings account. <laughs> yeah, for real. I was actually talking about this with a coworker. He's like, how much your take is going to be? And I was like, well, that depends if we get a U.S. game or not, which they're, pr- they're probably going to leave the U S games for like, I don't know, maybe Columbus. Cause they love Columbus, but new york or la who knows but if we get a u.s game how much will those be four or five hundred bucks a ticket resale i would guess at least why resale oh because there's a lottery system you're you're not going to get face yeah it's going to be next to impossible you Uh, think it's next to impossible why i mean maybe lottery's lottery bro as a season ticket member you might have an inside track for for sporting Uh, kc or the kc current i don't know i just imagine there's so many corporate sponsors and whatnot that are going to be getting tickets it's it's probably going to be oh so the fans don't get the go i mean it's, it's fifa that's so, crazy. That yeah. is, sports doesn't matter. All no. of you listening, sports is a game. I mean, it's like the Super Bowl. It's mostly just like corporate partners and sponsors and whatnot. Like there's it's some status. face value tickets. It's what but... it is. I go to the Super Bowl. You know why? Because I have a lot of money. Right. So, But I mean, me. hey, I plan on being at a game. Now, if it's a non-US game and a non-Mexico game, because Mexico might be equally as crazy in yeah, terms of pricing. Yeah, uh, I would guess 150 bucks a ticket for just like a random group stage game. Well, maybe that's easy. I'd go to a Poland, South Korea game, you know? Sure. Robert Lewandowski care. might still be playing. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what it is. Like I just, you know, I plan to go. I'm excited. I hopefully we could find a way to get tickets together. Probably not. <laughs> we'll do what we can. See we'll what see. happens, man. So maybe we'll invite Graham Zeus. He'll come with us. My goodness. He asked, he asked us what we're doing for the holidays and we didn't ask him back. I'm sorry, Graham. I wish we were best friends, Graham, but I'm blowing it. Uh, it's a, he didn't buy that. Your hair was modeled after him either. No, I need, cause it's a little shorter now. So I need to go up to shoulder length, <laughs> right? And you need the beard to just fill out a little bit more to be quite like his. Let's not get crazy. That really can't do that very well. <laughs> it, it gets real red. It's your, like your hair. It's crazy. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, 
let's let's talk a little bit about this U.S. game. So, I mean, I guess the the, the lineup was was interesting. Um, if there's criticisms to be had of of Greg Berhalter in in this World Cup, it's some people were a little bit confused about his roster selection, leaving somebody like Ricardo Pepe off the roster. Um, yeah, potentially the best striker in the U.S. pool, uh, definitely at least for the future for now, but maybe even right now. Uh, didn't play Gio Reyna or maybe Brendan and Aronson even as much as some people thought. There was maybe some, uh, you know, Gio Reyna injury uh, hiccups there. But then you come into this last game, must win game, l- like literally must win or you're going home. And up top, you start Jesus Ferreira from FC Dallas who hasn't played a single minute the entire World Cup. Yeah, it's a it's it's winner go home situation. But let's get let's put this guy in the in the racket. See how it goes. I just, I, part of me, honestly, I felt bad for Jesus Ferreira because he did not have a good half. Yeah. Um, he did not help the U.S. at all. And I don't think he was set up for, for success because that's, that's a pretty big ask. It's like, oh, hey, you're a striker. You're, you're on the up and up. You're coming from MLS. You're, you're, t- you're talented. You haven't played yet. And okay, now uh, go score a goal against Virgil van Dijk and Nathan Ake. I think I'd be pretty mad at Greg. <laughs> like you want to step to that challenge, but I think I, I think I'd be like, why the fuck would you play me? <laughs> why I mean, would they, you put me in? Yeah, they probably. I'm, I'm sure he's he's hyped and, and whatnot, but it's got to be. I mean, that's uh, this is the biggest moment of his career. Yeah, and and he just I, I don't know that he was set up for success very well, and so I feel bad from there. Pulisic had the moment of the game early on, one on one with the Noppert, the you know giant transformer of a Dutch goalkeeper that was quite the tree back there uh he's six eight i think that's a very large man uh yeah. i was like you you definitely want to kick it low right make his big ass get on the ground yeah uh because if it's up in the air or to his sides <laughs> he's just gonna go ah <laughs> it's I, I mean it's um i don't know that we would have won necessarily if Polisic would have put that away but it because, puts pressure on him there were some defensive issues later, the back post defending. You know, there, there's there was just a Dutch quality that uh, giving up a, a goal to Daily Blint. Like what the fuck? Yeah. That he doesn't score goals. Uh, like what was, is that? What's happening? I mean, it was honestly it was a cool moment for Daily Blint because he got to run over to his dad, who's on the Dutch coaching staff, and they got to share that moment. So oh, cool for him. Okay, um, <laughs> what do we call that? What's that called when you? That's nepotism. <laughs> yeah, the U.S. soccer doesn't know anything about nepotism. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I mean, Memphis to pay. He had, you know, just Depay. Uh, Depay. You show some respect. Sorry, Memphis to pay. And um, he doesn't he, go by Depay. He doesn't. Did you hear John Strong's uh, story? I know. Hey, it was an interesting story. Uh, it was. Look, props there to was John also Strong. Another one, by the way. How come? How come a lot of deadbeat dads are making great soccer players? <laughs> <laughs> Pro- they leave their kid, and their kid's like, "I'm Memphis now." I've enjoyed John Strong on the call um, more Fun than I've alerts enjoyed over. Fox's studio coverage. I just I don't need Alexi Lawless yelling at me anymore. Good um, point. Or John was full of the facts. He John's always had great. fun shit. I love John. Uh, you it was know, the I learning corner. Maurice Do. I think there's some guys there that have been doing really well, and then yeah. we have Alexi just yelling and love Wayne Landon Dempsey. Donovan. He's a, he's a great <laughs> soccer player, but when his analysis is like. You can't let them score a third goal. I'm like, thanks. No, is that maybe we'll try to win the game too. (laughs) Um, But I think this was, you know, the the one goal that the U.S. got to to pull back a goal, give give a little bit of hope. It was from Haji Wright. He got a touch on it. He didn't intend to do what it did. I mean, oh, sure he did. If he could have intended it, it would have been absolutely mind-blowingly world-class but he didn't happened. know much about it he got a touch on it it kind of bounced behind him you know over into the, the far corner of the net but... i didn't know what happened i i glad we get the slow motion stuff because i'm like did he trip or what did the ball get in his way of running <laughs> yeah i think potentially um and, and i don't want to be a total debbie downer i want to talk a little bit more about this and what it means going forward because i think there's definitely things to build on but i think four years from now though it, three and a half we got to wait so <laughs> long, dude. Except but women next year, baby. Women next year. But then we have a gold cup coming up. And then before you know it, it's going to be World Cup qualifying cycle again, which thankfully we auto qualify because we're a host nation. But okay. there's going to be, I mean, I think we have games in January again with the U.S. men's national team. There's friendlies that they got to play. This between now and three and a half years from now, 
I'm fascinated to see what players that are sort of on maybe a, a Buzio, a Caden Pierre, the Eric Palmer Brown, the players who are on sort of that U20 team. We got the Olympics between now and then too, that some of our young guys like Eunice Musa are still going to be young enough to play in. Who are we going to continue to develop? Who are some of the younger guys that are on the fringes of making the senior team that might be able to step up and bolster this team for 2026? Because I don't think we can sit here and say, we're, we're going to compete to win it necessarily in 2026. But I think it's also fair to say that going out in the knockout round is going to be a disappointment in, tw- or in the round of 16, I should say. It's going to be a disappointment in 2026. You want to at least make the quarters or semis if you can in your home country. Yeah, they're going to try to go for it all, though. I mean, you're on home soil. You got all your sure. people behind you. Like, they're absolutely going to go balls to the wall. This might be the only chance to actually win it on home soil. That doesn't always sure. happen. So, yeah. Uh, I'm excited, man. And I think that uh, I'm also excited to see if you and I have maybe some gray hair in about four years. That could oh be fun. <laughs> you got, have you had your first yet? What's that been like? I haven't found one yet. So, haven't. All right. No. Wait till you get them in your facial hair. That's good times. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, it's, I, I don't know. I just, I think there are things to build on. I don't think Greg Bearhalter will be here. Um, I don't think Greg Bearhalter <laughs> will be here maybe even in the January window. So and it'll be and, for me is then. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't want Peter to leave. Uh, I've seen people mention uh, Roberto Martinez, who's stepping down away from the Belgian job, former former Everton manager. So, you know, my thoughts on him. Um, there have been people who have thrown out the idea of Jesse Marsh, but I don't know that I'm going to see Jesse Marsh leave a Premier League club to come coach the national team. Yeah. Um, who knows? There's, there's a couple lot. Tata is available. How what what sort of a heel turn would that be to go straight from Mexico to the U.S.? No way that happens. Um, but the, I just think this is an exciting time to be a U.S. men's national team fan because I think there can be so much potential progress in the next few years that we could have a really strong showing if things go right, if we get the coaching hire right, if we can c- continue to develop some of these players. Um, you got to address striker though. And you got to find another center back because it can't be Tim Ream again. So. Yeah. I mean, but put some respect on that man's name because he oh, was a hey. blast to watch and he was awesome. Absolutely. Uh, and Walker Zimmerman sh- certainly has promise. So mm-hmm. it's, Kim uh, Vickers has, has some promise there. It's just yeah. who's, you know, and it might be CCV and Zimmerman four years from now, who knows, but uh, so USA can't win the world cup this year. Name a club you'd like to see win. Does it just not matter to you? Or if you had to pick one, is it is it Croatia? Hoping they don't get smacked by Brazil. I guess Croatia, yeah, because I Brazil's have... going to absolutely wipe the floor. <laughs> I have some Croatian in me. Um, my brother's tra- still trying to become a Croatian citizen because technically we can be. So, uh, you know, we're... Uh, hey, Cro- Croatia is going to be the underdog, heavy underdog in that game because Brazil was toying with South Korea in that first half. That was bananas. Yeah. Just... Can you imagine, you know, uh, my, my wife's boss is uh, Korean and he's married to a full on uh, Brazil woman. And uh, I'm like, wow, today must be a rough day in the house. <laughs> I mean, it's just I don't know how you stop that Brazil team. You got Neymar, you got Richarlison, you got Vinicius Jr. I mean, they have just an unreal attack. And that's why yeah. they scored four goals in like 37 minutes. And then they're like, OK, we can just pump the brakes a little bit just let's practice our passing guys right i just you know <laughs> that's hey, what i'm always like if you're up let's let's <laughs> practice you know do some long balls and shit i mean part of me was surprised i mean brazil on the other hand you know maybe they know how it feels because they were on the loser's end of that german shellacking that was like what seven to one eight to yeah. one so bad deal yeah maybe they know what it's like to, to beat that other team so they're like hey, we got our four goals we're fine that will start a war between the countries. If you rack, you know, run up the score like that, holy moly, that was a that was a bad time. Well, yeah, and you think of all the think pieces that were written about the U.S. women when they did it. Yeah, none of those were written about the German men's team when they did True. it against Brazil. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I Croatia probably. If if the Netherlands went on to win it, I'd be fine. At least mm-hmm. we lost to the World Cup champions. So yeah, for sure. That's, that's all. That's all. What. Uh, you know, sort of my thoughts on it, but can't wait for 2026. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing to watch this team grow. So we'll see. But right. um, we did talk a little bit with Graham Zusi about that. And we talked with him about the brand new contract that he signed. So should we uh, kick it on over to there? 
well, let's preface that contract real fast that also signing Roger. That's true. And signing uh, Andrea, Andrea Fontas. That's right. Fontas for two more years, Roger and, and, and Zeus for, for one. So, And some people might be a little bit surprised about Fontas if they weren't paying a lot of attention. But I think based on um, the Nemanja Rodoya signing and how they mentioned him talking to Fontas in the article, you could read the tea leaves that he was probably coming back. Yeah, so. we were all speculating like hot gossip girls and stuff like yeah. oh my gosh his friend is on the team <laughs> <laughs> so um we don't know the contract numbers yet curious to see those when they come out next year from the mls players association it probably won't yeah. be a million for fontas like it was this past year but we'll see probably and, significant uh, cuts all around and yeah. still that roster's pretty pretty damn full right now so it'll be interesting to see what happens there will probably be another center back i think we got a question from somebody that was saying uh you know alex brown says skc needs a, a starting center back signing plus perhaps another backup um so you know they need somebody who's athletic they need somebody who can move around um it, it'll be we, we probably have i guess it'll be ford or volater back there next to yeah. fonty at least right now um so you know I'd like to have somebody that Ford's pretty athletic. I, I like that. Somebody who can get up and be an aerial threat. So he is. absolutely. We'll and he knows what to do to get to the top tier. No, I'm just kidding. He didn't know that they were illegal fat burners. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm excited. Yeah, we probably will get another center back. But overall, I'm happy that we brought back Zussi and Roger for another year with an option for the following year. So probably yeah. a team friendly deal. And, and Fonty, we got to wait and see what the terms are. But He's got it in him. He had the one year in uh, 2021 that was, you know, MLS best 11 quality. Can he get and back he, there? We'll see. He had those moments this year. Like, people are real hard on a center back when something bad happens. But when he does something great, it's like, we got to look at that. Like, the quality's there. Yeah. And he got better once the midfield kind of got worked out with Tommy coming in and whatnot. So, we'll see. Totally. Totally. Well, we should kick it to Zeus, right? Okay. Let's talk to him, man. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, y'all. Stick, uh, stick with us after the break to talk to Sporting KC defender Graham Zussi. Woo. All right, folks. As promised, we are here with future sporting legend, current Sporting KC defender, winger, midfielder, you know, all-around <laughs> utility player extraordinaire, <laughs> Graham Zussi. Graham, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing very well. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I mean, you guys have been going for a while. I don't know what my... Uh, <laughs> well, I haven't been on yet, but um, oh, no. no, thanks for having me. Oh, no. I appreciate it. <laughs> I have to right say, off the bat. it's my fault because my work schedule is not quite as flexible. So I'm, I'll am i take the bullets on that one. Dan, right. as you can see, has been growing his hair out just to emulate you. Oh, yeah, that's it. what it is. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, you know, I guess the obvious first question is, Graham, uh, you are officially back as a sporting Kansas city player for at least one more year. So uh, how does it feel to officially know that you're going to be back and, uh, and, and, and what's it like to just sort of have that on the books ready to go? Yeah, no, I, I was, uh, I was very, happy. first of all, yeah, I'm thrilled to be, be back with the, with the organization, with the guys. Um, but I'm also very, uh, very happy that, it, you know, we got it done pretty quickly and, you know, both parties were, um, you know, they, it was, it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, you know, they, they let me know that they wanted me back and to me, it's kind of a no brainer. Um, I, you know, I've been with this club so long, the relationship has been, uh, just great. You know, there's, there's a whole lot of just mutual respect from both sides. So, um, for me, it's it's a pretty easy decision, um, and uh, yeah, now just super stoked to to be back, and um, especially after kind of the the difficult year that we had, um, I'm looking forward to kind of riding that ship, and um, next year can't come quick enough. Man, I'm over here uh, marking off questions I had because you're just uh, answering them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the uh, yeah. I was going to ask if there was ever any doubt that you would be here. Um, obviously, you want to be here. Things got done really fast. Uh, did you even anticipate like listening to other clubs or offers at all? Did you did you even think about entertaining that idea? Um, not this year at all, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I, you know, last year, it was kind of the first time that I was in the whole free agency market. Um, and I, I listened to other clubs. Uh, first and foremost, I, I wanted to be here. That was like, kind of, that was the, the, that was my feeling going into the whole thing, but I didn't want to have any, like, I don't know, I guess regrets in, in terms of just like, kind of listening out other teams and, and um, let's be honest, it feels kind of good to be courted and, and, um, and wanted. So uh, I, I heard out some other teams, um, if you will. Uh, but ultimately my goal was to be here in Kansas city um, for the rest of my career. Uh, and so um, last year I kind of, I did that whole thing. Got it out of my system, I guess. And, um, this year, there was not even a not even a thought uh, about um, hearing out some other other teams and organizations. Um, and to be honest, I think part of that the reasoning for that was just um, kind of how the season went. Uh, I, I I did not want to to end it on that note. Um, you know, I think I, I personally, I think I have uh, a lot more to give, and then collectively as a group, just not just not the standard that we we hold ourselves to, um, and that kind of goes across the board. And, and I'm looking forward to, you know, I, I know the work that I've been putting in already in this off season, and I know uh, a lot of the other guys are doing the same thing. So I'm excited for what's to come. Um, we'll get some some guys back from injury. Uh, and then with the, the couple additions we made towards the end of last year, I think we have a, a very solid group. So you mentioned the off season and I'm sure the off season, especially for soccer players, conditioning and whatnot, is filled with a bunch of training, uh, staying in shape. Uh, maybe this one was a little bit different since you had the contractual negotiation, but when, when the season ends and you're in the off season, is there like, a vacation or, or something that you're like, man, now finally I got time someplace you got to go just to like take a week or whatnot and just sort of clear your mind. And and where is that? No, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, the, the soccer season is, it's long, it's, it's brutal. Um, it takes a toll on you physically and mentally. Um, Mm -hmm. so for me, uh, the, I, I almost forced myself to, to get away from everything um for i'd say if if i have a long off season kind of like we do this year i'll give myself like two weeks to just kind of um, clear my head uh let my my body um i guess just kind of like take a step back and like a sigh of relief almost from from the long year um and so I did a couple, couple small, smaller trips this year. Nothing crazy. I, I went out to Utah. Uh, my brother lives out there. Um, he's a he's a big uh, outdoorsy kind of guy as well. So nice. we just go up into the mountains and kind of get lost and <laughs> do some things. Uh, you, know, you know, outdoorsy fun activities that we both enjoy. Um, I was down in Mexico for a, a few days as well, just to um, get some warmth in, in the beach as well. Um, <laughs> And then back at it, came back and, and I think, gosh, two days after I got back from that one, I was, I was hitting it pretty, pretty good and hard. Um, you know, I, 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 I've talked about it many times before, but I, I, I love the off season um, and, and what you can do to, to prep yourself for a, a full MLS season. Um, I, I, you're able to do some things that you're not quite able to do in season uh, in terms of kind of some of that gym work and um, just kind of the strength program and, and conditioning that, that we do. So for me, it's, it's a, it's a chance to, to really um, kind of set the, the, uh, the framework to, to make yourself last a, a full MLS season. And for me at the, the ripe old age that I am, um, <laughs> it becomes more and more important. So I, I, I love the process of it. And, uh, to me, that's, I, I think is the reason I've been able to do, um, this for so long. Man, I just 
I know watching you out there, like you're, you're systematic in things in your warm up, in your cool down. Like you have to be. You can't be this 19 year old kid and just don't even warm up. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. But you you do have a young guy kind of in your same spot who got a lot of playing time this year. <laughs> Shaking his head. He's like, I see where yeah. we're going here. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I love it. <laughs> Well, I mean, Caden Pierre, man, and I know you don't, yeah. uh, you probably don't pay attention to social media or anything like that. Uh, people, lot. yeah, searching your name, because why would you ever do that? A lot of people think it's Caden's position. And Jimmy will bring that up on here because people will send us questions. And I say, yeah. you're doubting Graham <laughs> Zussi? You doubt him every year, and he comes back and takes the position. It's sure. yours to lose. So, I mean, but what's it like competing with Caden Pierre on, on a daily basis? Uh, I, I love and I need the competition, um, and it's it hasn't just been Caden in the past year. It's it's the all the years before that as well. There, there's always competition for spots, um, and as soon as you as soon as you assume that it's yours to to be had, uh, then you're uh, I don't know. I, I I just that whole mentality has never been the case for me. Um, so I, I'll, I'm going into the season very much in the, in the same uh, mentality that I have pretty much every single year of my career. And that's, you know, I need to compete for that spot. Uh, it, it is absolutely not mine to be had. I, I, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love the competition. KP is a is an insane young talent. Uh, there, there's no question about it. Um, and I'm not naive to the fact that I, I will be doing this for the rest of my life. There's no, there's just, there's, there's a timeline on this, on this profession, unfortunately. Um, so when that time comes, uh, I am very comfortable and, and um, proud of the fact that I, I know it'll be going into some, some very good hands, you know, in, in KP. Uh, very capable hands. So um, I'm excited to see what, what he brings um, in the next few years. I mean, he, he's, you you forget how young some of these guys still are. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's, um, it's amazing where they are at this point in their life because that um, when I was, when I was that age, when, when, when my kind of generation was coming through those young young guys were, were few and far between. I mean, that, that was, that just wasn't happening. So to see that happening now is, is pretty cool. Um, and KP is a guy who's got all the tools um, to, to be a very, very successful player. And he's got you passing some down to him as well. Like couldn't have a better mentor in Graham's. No, and, you know? and, and that's, that's something that I, I, I take pride in as well. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to have some, some, uh, older guys when I was young who didn't have to take me kind of under their wing, but, but did because they cared about um, the future of the club and, and the legacy that, that they created and, and helped maintain. And I, and I'm the same way. I, I, I want to leave this club in, in a better situation than I, than I came in with, you know, and, and that goes with the, the culture, the mentality of the group and, um, and uh and the success of the club so uh i i take so much pride in that and um you know i think that's i guess another another benefit of of having some of these uh these old senior citizens on the team for <laughs> sure <laughs> We had Raj on not that long ago, and he was talking about how it's interesting having some of you around who have been with the team for a while, and then some of these young guys who are coming up, whether it's KP or, or Buzio when he was here, Cam or whatnot. What's like one thing that illustrates like the generational divide? Is it like music, or is it like Fortnite that they're up until two AM playing? Or language, like, what language. Like, what what what's the, the the biggest thing where you're like, damn, these kids are so much younger? Um, yeah, it's a few things. I you know I think that the fact that I've been in that setting for so long there, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's an absolute, absolute generational gap there. <laughs> um, but uh, I was, kind of, I was in the same boat as well. So I, yeah. I can't, you can't fault them at all for it. No. Um, it's just kind of how it is. Um, 
sometimes I'm, I'm frustrated by it because of just <laughs> my uh, of where I'm at in life at the moment. And it's almost like the, you know, hate to do it, but it's like, oh, or, you know, if I would have known what I know now, <laughs> uh, I would have done this. But, but you can't. Back when I signed. You you're right. Yeah. You can't do that, though. I mean, these kids are, are figuring it out in their own way. Um, and uh, I, I can I can try to help as much as possible and, and be there to you know, answer questions or give them a, you know, hey, listen, come on. Like what you're doing, you, you, you know, that that's not that's not what it's going to take to to get to the next level. So I'm allowing them to go on their own journey and find themselves as well, but uh, also there for, for when they need it. Well, and the support structure from not just the club, but the league is probably light years ahead now oh gosh, for some yeah. of these young kids than when it was when, when you were first coming into the league. Oh, no question about it. There's, there's all sorts of, uh, you know, rookie young player symposiums that, that are available now. Um, I mean, you, you, you literally name it and, and there's something available. It, it's, it's actually, it's something that the league's doing that I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed about uh, just giving, giving guys tools, at, you know, outside of soccer, um, you know, anything that they may be interested in uh, across the board is, is available. So. Awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, you know, Graham, obviously the back to soccer a little bit, the, obviously the, the year didn't start how you wanted. Uh, yeah. It wasn't, uh, wasn't very the consistent results, uh, so to speak, but it really picked up once Tommy and Agata got in there and, they, mm-hmm. And they came in the team fast, right? So yeah. what do you expect from this team going forward? We're all very excited for 2023. Um, you also presumably have a healthy Polito and Gotti Kinda coming back into the mix. You guys got to be just firing on all cylinders, just ready to get back to pr- training camp, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, again, like I said, I'm, I'm excited to get back and get to work. Um, you know, just because we have a, a full roster available does not mean we're going to automatically be successful, right? So um, we'll set the tone pretty early in preseason, I think, to um, to put ourselves in a really good spot to be successful. And, and uh, typically the, the mentality in, in preseason is actually – it's very strong from the group. Um, that will have to continue. And then – um, once season hits, yeah, it's it's going to be uh, being more consistent. Um, you know, you talk about that. Let's let's call it the pre uh, pre Agata and and um, Tommy phase, where we were we put together a, a really good half or um, or or bits of a game, um, but the consistency wasn't wasn't there. You know, so. Um, getting to getting back to playing a, a solid full game, um, and will and then it'll it'll bring the results that we we need. You know, that's I think that was, that was the frustrating part of the season is that you saw so many glimpses of of really good, you know, typical sporting KC soccer, mm-hmm. and uh, the frustrating thing is is that it, it would last a, a half and then. Um, and then for, for whatever reason, it would, it would uh, kind of fade. But um, so, yeah, getting back to, to just that consistency uh, across the full game will, will lend, uh, lend some better results and, and put us in a good spot. Because, yeah, like you said, I mean, we, we, f- we finished the year on an absolute tear. I mean, yeah. that's what was kind of bizarre. Um, something that I've never really experienced before is, is how hot we were kind of going into that playoff time. Um, well, it looked like you, you were having fun, Graham, where you guys were just having fun no, again. It, well, it, it winning's fun, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that helps. Um, but, you know, typically the teams who are trending upwards leading into the playoff time, they do well in playoffs. You know, they, they, they make it to the final. You know, look at Seattle and, and their, their kind of heyday. You know, Seattle during the year were – they were fine. They, were, they hung around. They were, they were right mm-hmm. there. 
but Belong. come playoff time, they were they were trending upwards always, and then they they make it to the final. That's what it felt like on on our end. But for it to be that that, and then not like the playoffs, and it's just like doom. <laughs> it's just like this drop off. It just felt really really bizarre. Um, it's something I've never kind of experienced before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine that's tough. I, I we had said before on the pod uh, if there's like three more weeks in this season, oh, yeah. SKC would yeah. be in that if playoff that, yeah. position, and oh, nobody sure. would have wanted to play SKC in no. the postseason. No. Well, I no. I would have taken us against any team in the playoffs this year. I mean, it was just just that team was just so different from the beginning of the yeah, year. I, I was like, I don't even know these guys, but most of them are the same guys. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's it's uh it's it's amazing what a little uh, confidence and and uh, kind of that group mentality where where everyone everyone was fighting for everyone. It was, um, you know, it's not like the it's not like the the teams we were playing were were rubbish or um, or other teams just started giving up. It, we, we were, it was just, you know, the, the group was in a, in a really good spot mentally. And uh, when that happens, you're, you're tough to beat. I want to get your thoughts on uh, the world cup as a world cup vet here in, in just a, a few moments. But before then um, we had Seth Sinovic on a, a little while back and, and he had mentioned that playing at that left back position, he thought he might get yelled at by Peter Vermees more than anybody else because he was <laughs> always just there right next to Peter, at least for a half. So yeah. now you're his counterpart on, on, on the right side. I imagine it's probably a, a similar experience for you. And, and do you have any uh, suitable for air Peter Vermees stories that you can say from, or from not. being so close to him? I don't know what Seth's talking about. I've never been yelled at my whole career before. <laughs> also, why does Jimmy keep naming people we've had on before you? This is a slap in the face. Yeah, right? I won't That's stand tough. for this. <laughs> That's Next messed up. I know you're going to have uh, the kit man on. That's true. You're going to have the kit man on, have you? We did well, have the kit oh, man on God. early on before. It was before we got big enough to get players on. <laughs> Little so. did you know, Graham's been aware of us for a while. We He was just waiting for an invitation. It scares Seriously. me every time. I've been telling Jimmy for here. years, to be honest. I'm like, dude, Graham <laughs> Zussi, big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so that's always kind of been an ongoing joke with uh, with Seth that, you know, you, you kind of dread, you know, you're, you're vying for, for the which half you're going to be on, on Peter's side. <laughs> um, but, no, it, it's funny, so, so – Obviously, Pete and I know each other extremely well, and and have a, a great relationship. Um, and there are times where, and this is, uh, it's got to be difficult for for him to to be watching on the sideline, especially as a as an ex player, <laughs> because you just you you want to be out there so bad. So there are times where he um, can become a little bit like like he's playing a a video game where he's tr- he like wants to <laughs> control everyone. <laughs> but um, so like if, if like I'm say I'm, I'm opening up to get a ball and, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, you know, playing with, uh, you know, uh, my instincts or whatnot. And then a ball is coming to me and I'll hear Pete like right, like a couple <laughs> yards behind me telling me to do something where turn, I had a, a thought where I was I, like, as the ball's coming, okay, I'm doing this. And then he'll tell me to do something else. And you almost like, you feel the necessity, <laughs> the, the necessity to do what he does. Yeah. And then as soon as you do that, you like the ball will go through your legs. And like, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> so I turn around and, and just give him a look. And he's like, all right. Damn yeah, it, Peter. That. <laughs> That's fair. That's hey, um, you have the luxury of know, being fun. able to give him a look probably since you've been here long enough. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to get too comfortable, but yeah, uh, you know, we again, we we uh, we have a pretty good relationship. So good enough where you might kiss him like Willie did. Oh, <laughs> did he kiss him or did he choke him? Yeah, that's a, good <laughs> a little bit of both. Now there's a what? funny picture of of that. Uh, I was at our uh, they put it on a, one of our monitors at the practice facility for like a week after that's that amazing. happened. At so least, good. at least they didn't put. Uh, did they put the video on where uh, Peter fell on the sidelines? Was that on the? Mon- <laughs> yeah, if, if people value their job, they won't do that. So <laughs> that I, was, was, I was scared was to tweet good. about it. I was, like, what was if Peter sees this? <laughs> 
Uh, Graham, we got, you got St. Louis city coming into the league next year. Yeah. And I'm kind of interested in what uh, your personal take is and maybe what the feeling is uh, on the team as a whole, but there, you know, can it be a rivalry if there's been no games yet? Um, is it just, just being geographical and down the there's highway? Was that we play, we play them in open cup and it was amazing. Fair enough. Fair it enough. was incredible. Their fans were fantastic. They came and they were so loud. Um, Good point. But you know, to answer your question, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, you're but fine. To answer your question, I think absolutely. I think, you know, expansion teams these days come in with almost a, a cult following before the team plays a game, mm-hmm. um, which is great for the league, of course. Um, but I think, you know, the, the league has, has been trying to force rivalries with us you know that we had the salt lake thing for a while we had houston for a while now they're trying to do uh, uh minnesota. minnesota and it's it doesn't feel real yet right mm-hmm. um but i think the st louis one will will absolutely feel like a, a rivalry um and really all i have go, to go on that is is the one game we played and, and mm. to me that was you know the, the atmosphere was electric their fans were – they came in, and to their credit, to our stadium, and they were they were super loud. Um, and I scored that game, so that was kind of a, a happy <laughs> so, um, Well, you know, your fans will travel. I mean, SKC fans will show oh, up. Oh, for sure. And oh, that'll be gosh, uh, yeah. easy, easy peasy. No, no, that, that's that's exactly right. I think it's uh, – um, you know, you guys have – or the, the fans have always – traveled super well to like, to like the Colorado games. I, you know, that, that for me, the, the, you know, having the road draw and go out to Colorado, I mean, really like, across the league, uh, sporting fans show up in, incredibly well. Uh, I think this one, just the, the ease of access will be, um, will be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Uh, you represented the United States of America at a world cup. You've been a U.S. men's national team mainstay for, for quite a while. Obviously uh, U S just got knocked out of the world cup. Um, but first, before we maybe get into that just a little bit um, when you were representing the United States at the world cup in, in 2014, what's it like stepping onto the field in the biggest sporting event in the world, representing your country, knowing you're one of, you know, a, a couple dozen at most people who are getting that opportunity once every four yeah. years. Oh man, it, it is. It's easy to allow the moment to kind of take over you and, um, and then become a little bit lost in it. So I, I remember being very um, intentional and, in, you know, stepping on the field and, and, and kind of looking around and, and, and trying to take it all in. Um, but then allowing that to give you, uh, I guess more, more energy and, and more, uh, I don't know. It, 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 you, I, I think the best, best way to describe it is that you, you can become lost in the moment and then almost forget, you know, what even happened? Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I you know I the U.S. fans down there were were so they they traveled so well that every game almost felt like a home game, um, and so that that really uh, fed you and, and and drove you on and um, you know I I. I those games were just, they were, they were so incredible. And, and especially with the group we had, that was a, that was a brutal group um, <laughs> with, with Ghana, Portugal and, and Germany. And, true. and to get, to get through that group was, was an amazing feeling. And then being so close with, uh, with Belgium, the next, uh, the next round was, uh, it was heartbreaking. I mean, at, at, you know, I, I, I remember thinking about, you know, when I was watching the guys um, this past weekend, how it, it's, it's a, it's another really bizarre feeling of, of the, you're on this, they're on such a high um, going through the group stage and then you get through the group stage and you, and you play the next game and you're, you know, there's so much hype around it and then you get knocked out and you're 
flying home the next day. That, yeah. That's crazy. Um, I played a, a sporting game, I think, four days later here in Kansas City. And it's like, <laughs> you, you, it's weird coming down from that, that just that like ultra high of your, of your career, really. So, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, the experience was amazing. I mean, you, you know, that's, that's the peak in, in the, in the soccer, um, career, uh, representing your country at a, at a world cup is, I mean, gosh, you, you, you write that as your, your dream in your, in your elementary school, uh, classes, you know? So it's, mm-hmm. it's insane when, when that comes to fruition and, um, and you got assists. Got a couple of assists. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, Pretty cool. No, it was it was uh, just one of those those moments where you, you no chance you'll ever forget it. Um, it's funny. I, I was thinking the other day that I've never I've never watched one of those games back. Uh, hmm. And as I was watching this World Cup, I, I've never watched a game back, and it's something that. I think I'd probably like to do because there's probably moments in, in the games that you kind of forget. You're like, Oh yeah, yeah, this happened, this happened. This happened. <laughs> and then seeing, uh, I guess the, um, the fan side of it would be, yeah. would be kind of fun to see. Cause I, I, I've, I've been so into this world cup. Um, and I, I mean, I've been a super fan. It was so fun to see our boys, uh, do well. Cause I, I, I mean, I think they did do very, very well. Um, or I guess how inexperienced they, the group was at, you know, at something with, with, at that level. So I, I think they handled themselves extremely well. Um, and I was, I was fanboying pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you mentioned uh, trying to come down from the world cup when you get back in town and everything sporting, wasn't going to let you and Beasley come down <laughs> at all because they signed no, no. you to lucrative deals. Uh, <laughs> you guys were kind of the poster, the poster guys, uh, for Kansas city soccer. And I would say you helped bring more eyes to the sporting brand. Um, I know that because I didn't start supporting soccer till 2014, went to a game once you and Beasler were the guys in the national team world cup year. And what's that feel like to be one of the guys that probably helped bring in thousands of more viewers man more sporting fans for life you know yeah it's funny i i i i I guess i never viewed myself as as that if you will um minsky spokesperson you mean oh god (laughs) (laughs) it had to come up huh (laughs) up. um but no I, i i you know I guess looking back on it now, um, there's, I, I feel very fortunate to, um, I, I guess have a small part in, uh, in this club's history and, and helping, uh, you know, bring it to, to what it's become. Uh, because I, I, you know, I've always said that I'm, I'm, I feel very fortunate to have seen kind of the full spectrum of, of what is now sporting. Um, Cause I was playing in community miracle ballpark um, where I, you know, if I had to use the restroom during a game, I was waiting in line with fans. <laughs> which is, Nobody lets you go. No, it, it was wild. I'm sitting there with my full kit waiting for a public bathroom. It, it, no. it's insane. But um but yeah, to, to see where, where it is now and to have, have been there kind of every step of the way. Uh, I don't know, that's, that's, that's special for me. Uh, one more before we let you go, and, and thank you again for, for sticking around with us. You, you know, you mentioned how much it's grown since those Community America days. And, and now we're sort of marching toward what might be one of the biggest accomplishments in Kansas City soccer history, which is hosting a World Cup game in 2026. Um, where do you see the biggest opportunities for the U S men's national team to build on the success they had in this cup between now and 2026? And and what do you think it'll be like for Kansas city to have such a world event here in our hometown? 
I, I couldn't be more excited about it. Um, I think it's, for one, it's, it's well-deserved. Uh, you know, I think some people think, you know, this was kind of a, a I don't know. I've heard random things about how Kansas City might not deserve it, but that, that, that couldn't, couldn't be further from the truth. I think we're an incredible host city. Um, that's, that's what Kansas City does best for me. You know, the, the community, the people, um, they're, they're, they just, they thrive off of that. So uh, I, I'm so excited for it. Um, I think that uh, you, can already, you can already see, like, the city almost changing in order to, to become a, a better host. And, mm-hmm. and yes, it, there, there will be things that, that uh, we have to do to uh, accommodate uh, such a big event, but um, we'll do it. Uh, mm-hmm. there's, there's no question about it. We'll, we'll do whatever we, we have to, to, to be the, the, the best host city uh, out there. Um, I, I'm, I'm uh, you know, my, my first uh, memory of, of world cup soccer is that 94 world cup that, that we hosted. Um, it was kind of my introduction to, to that level. And, and I was, I was actually in the, so Orlando where I'm from it was a, a host city as well. Mm-hmm. And I was in the, the opening ceremonies of the first match in Orlando. Oh, wow. Um, so it's kind of funny how it has all come full circle. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. But no, I, 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 I couldn't be, couldn't be more excited for, for the city. I, I can't wait to see, um, you know, everything that they, they put together uh, to make it just an incredible spot. Um, and you can, you can best believe that, that I'll be in Kansas city, wherever I am in my walk of life uh, for, for that, for that tournament. That's awesome. Do you think the, uh, the, the U S men's national team is on the, the right trajectory to sort of make some noise? In a few yeah, years? no, no question about it. I think, uh, I think you saw some, some really good glimpses um, this tournament. And then, uh, I mean, the team is so young that uh, all of those guys um, and, and I'm sure there'll be more, another crop coming up uh, in the next four years, but to have the, the kind of the, uh, the core group um, having that, ex- that tournament experience now is going to be huge come, come the next one. So, uh, you know, I was, I was very proud of, of the group. Um, I think we, we all maybe uh, were disappointed is not, so, not the, the, the best word, but um, you know, we, we, we saw such a, a strong showing in that, that yeah. opening round that we almost, maybe we were a little spoiled, but we, we expected <laughs> them to give, uh, give Holland a, 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 maybe a little bit better game, but um but no, I think I think that's only going to uh, motivate this group, um, and I think that uh, at the end of the day, we'll, uh, especially on home soil with with uh, some home fans, they can make a, a really good push. It's awesome. Well, you said you'll you'll be there in in four years. Be you know, for sure. Of course you will. You'll still be right back for Sporting Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We'll Tom see. Brady on the field. Yeah. I got one last thing for you, Graham. Yeah. I'm I'm 36 myself and like to dabble in a little recreational soccer, but what's oh, the secret sauce, man? Is it It's Pilates, right? You're doing Pilates on the ring? Pilates? I've never <laughs> done Pilates. I, I, no? So I do uh, – I don't, like, go to yoga, but, you know, I have, like, a – a nightly little routine where um, just little, some stretches, some, some activation and whatnot. Uh, I'll, I don't want to give too many secrets away, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know in person. maybe. I knew you had a routine, <laughs> yeah. man. I'm trying to get a routine so I'm not sore all the time. <laughs> yep, yep. Jeez. I love that. Awesome. Well, Graham, sure. hey, thanks again so much. Uh, yeah, we'll do it again, you. and it, it won't take as long. <laughs> I appreciate that, yeah. yeah no, no, we, I'm, I'm just giving you crap, but I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. <laughs> we've been building up to the true club legends. You know, we had Roger uh, okay, last time, enough. and now you. So, you know, we just had to cool good, Yeah, good, good save. Good save. <laughs> <laughs> well, Graham, thank you so much. And, and thanks, hey, brother. best of luck in, in 2023. We'll all be out there cheering for you and can't wait to see what this team does next year. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for all having right, me. Man. You take care. Take it easy. Sweet. 
All right, y'all. That was Whoa. future sporting legend, Graham Zussi. Whoa. And current best friend, Graham Zussi. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you like believe I it? Said, he gave us a little crap for waiting as long as we did. And, and uh, you know, I hey, we've said this before. It always scares me when people are like, yeah, you've been around for a long time. We know who you are. And I'm like, oh, God. When he said that, I was like, God damn, Jimmy. God, you, <laughs> you. I told you we needed him. Uh, and, uh, he, Sometimes, you know what, guys, guys, I am getting tired of like being right all the time. It is yeah. like a curse. And I'm like, it hurts me physically with joyous pain. <laughs> yeah, it should. I mean, you, hey, you know what you said? What you just you said to him, he's growing his hair out like I you. I and I was so embarrassed. I was first. like, I was like, nah, and, <laughs> and absolutely am. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I was so embarrassed. I was no, this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I just like long hair. And Graham goes, yeah, I'm sure that's the reason. And I was like, yeah. You're like, I've said it on the podcast before. <laughs> Maybe you haven't listened. He's like, no, I just know you've been around. You think I would listen to that trash? Yeah, it's, uh, hey, he, he was super fun to talk to. Um, yeah. You know, he understandably after games sometimes can, he's just, he's very well media trained. He knows that like, I don't need Clearly. to say anything crazy. And, uh, but I mean. He answered he, stuff that I didn't even ask yet. I was like, God damn it. Well, that's that question's gone. <laughs> I did enjoy that he kind of admitted though that when he's when he's back there defending again near Peter, uh, for, for whichever half he's near Peter, that sometimes he'll turn and give Peter a look and be like, What the hell, man? Oh, this one hundred percent. Everyone listening right now needs to know that if Graham makes a mistake on the soccer field, God forbid, it's Peter's fault. Peter told him, oh, he said. <laughs> Peter told him, and it made Graham confused, and he took a bad touch. Peter's not, that's not quite what he said, but no, I am that's gonna, what I'm saying. Right. So we're easier on the Z man. All right. I am going to look, though, because it makes sense. I mean, Graham's been around for a long time. He's got his instincts, he's got his philosophy. He knows what he should do with the ball and whatnot. I am going to look next time he's receiving a ball near Peter. If he kind of gives Peter a little look or whatnot, if there is an error, that's going to be the first thing I look for. Is always oh, giving Peter a look. Did Peter tell him to do one thing and it threw him that's off? So funny. You're always trying to get that inside hot goss with Peter, dude. It's so great. I love it. Well, and, you know, and I wanted to open him up a little bit. So that's when he was like, oh, yeah, when Willie kissed him, we had a big old picture up in the locker room for like a week. <laughs> I had to mention the slip and slide, bro. And he cracked up when he was talking about Peter spinning around and falling down. Oh, that was the best, dude. Just it's just. <laughs> it, so grateful to Graham for, for coming on and oh, um, yeah. from his home, I assume. Yeah, it's, he's not like in the office today at the training center. He's at home at and was like, time. let me let me get this ficus in the shot so I can have a <laughs> feng shui setup. Well, and it's all speaking of World Cup. It's also cool to be able to hear directly from somebody who had that experience. So you get kind of both the player experience, okay. but you also get the the fan experience because he's like i'm watching right now and i'm and i'm cheering it on as a fan it's wild to me he's never gone back and watched any of his 2014 games i about cried like when he was saying how <laughs> how serious it was i was just like yeah <laughs> i pledge allegiance to i wanted to stand up and be like heartbreak feels good in a place like I this just imagine on the video version it's it, we just zoom in on graham and you just see a waving flag behind them and you just hear the big brass band come up behind them if we, it's just... yeah if tucker could edit some of that in i'm, I'm sure he's <laughs> yeah, got no problem for did you even catch my amc nicole kidman reference <laughs> <laughs> but no graham hey appreciate it uh super thankful so uh um, super thankful dude and trying to just trying to hang out with us for the holidays i'm not sure if you got was, that vibe that's exactly the vibe i got yeah, he did ask us after, you know, what are we doing for the holidays? And I was like, you're too nice. I blew it. I blew it. Graham, if Graham, if you listen to your interviews, which you probably don't because you don't even watch your own games, but like, I, I wanted to ask you what you're doing for your holidays. I was like, don't be weird, Dan. Don't be weird. You want to come over for a vegan Christmas with me? <laughs> vegan. Dude, he would be like, yes. Is it like good vegan food? I'd be like, are you nuts? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Can we get through cool. one episode without saying I'm vegan? Like, this doesn't have yeah. to. What do we do this for? It's your brand. It's your brand. What? It's not my brand. It's yeah, Vegan Dan. That's what your Twitter handle is going to be now. Wow. VD. <laughs> Good stuff. VD. Love it. Uh, no. Uh, appreciate Graham. Appreciate those at the club who made that happen. And uh, yeah, looking forward to watching Graham and the rest of the guys in 2023. I think uh, it's clear that they're ready to work and, and next year's going to be a good year. Yeah, I do. So. I'm, I'm going to cut my hair a little shorter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, um, 
I think that's that's most of what we have. There's not a whole lot of other uh, sporting news this week. We talked about the new, uh, or, well, the new signings, the re-signings, and there's probably going to be more signings coming in the next, you know, so odd weeks. But uh, uh, did you say who your World Cup team is that you have left since the U.S. isn't in there? I got like four. <laughs> I don't like I don't like to say them because they're like Didn't all the white them? all the white countries, and know. I'm trying to like be an ally and shit. But like, yeah. I, I get into this heritage bullshit and I'm like, ah, Switzerland, sure. The whitest freaking white guys. <laughs> you did your 23 and me and you're, you're looking at your, of course. So of course okay. you do I that. Think... You're like, all of a sudden I feel 98% Belgian, <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> but I'm a loser now. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then the, the next day your Belgian, your uh, Belgium kit arrives. I'll tell you this, whoever wins between the England and France game, that's who I'd like to see go all the way. There is a part of me that thinks it would be interesting to see England go all the way, although I don't want them to have that because England's fan base is not great. Yeah, um, it's not like we live there, you know. We don't know. No, but I just, you know, they're annoying. Yeah. So if if France went back to back, that'd probably be annoying too. Uh, yeah. I'd. L- I don't think Croatia will get there, but if they could get there and avenge their loss from last time, that'd be fun. So root for Netherlands. You know, I usually if. If a team I like loses in a tournament, I usually cheer for that team that beat my team. Orange is my favorite color. So There you go. There you go. It's new black. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you all so much for listening. Oh, we really appreciate it. Thanks Graham to Graham Zussi. Zussi for coming on the pod and, uh, and joining us. We'll have him back again soon. Uh, but make sure you leave that five-star rating and review. If you haven't yet done so, do that on Apple Podcasts or leave a, a, rate, a five-star rating on Spotify. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Dan Kuzer at jcmac 3 at no other pod. You can shoot us an email, no other pod at gmail.com. Uh, but until next time, he's Dan. I'm Jimmy. We'll catch y'all later. See ya. Did I come off too strong to Graham? <laughs>